So we need to introduce several uh, basic ideas uh, for computing probabilities. And the first of these is something we'll call mutually exclusive events, how to calculate the probability for mutually exclusive events. So it's actually uh, much easier than it sounds. Um, so as a simple example, we can say, let's uh, roll a die, roll a six-sided die. So we can get results of one, two, three, four, five, or six. And say what we're interested in knowing is what's the probability that we either roll a five or we roll a six for that six-sided die. So that question may seem completely obvious. There's uh, six things we can roll. Two of them are five or six. So the, the odds of getting a five or six is two different options out of the six or, or one chance out of three of getting a, a five or six. So like I said, easy problem to start out with. but uh, when we explain the logic behind that answer a little more clearly, it'll help us introduce some terminology. So uh, there's six different outcomes that we could have gotten. We could roll a one, we could roll a two, a three, a four, a five, or a six. Any one of those outcomes could have happened when we rolled the die. Each one happens with an equal probability. And we've asked, uh, what's the probability that we get one of uh, these last two outcomes? So each one of these, there's six outcomes. So there's a one chance in six of getting each one of these outcomes. So what we did intuitively without thinking about it much was we said chances were two chances out of six of getting uh, our five or six, that's because there's a one chance in six of rolling a five and a one chance in six of rolling uh, a six. So what we intuitively did without thinking about it was we use this rule, which describes what happens when we have mutual exclusive events. Uh, the probability of, of some event A happening or some event B happening, rolling a 5 or rolling a 6, is the probability of the first one plus the probability of the second one. And that rule happens as long as a, events A and B are what we call mutually exclusive, meaning if one of them happens, it excludes the possibility of the other one happening. If I roll a five, I can't also have rolled a six. If I roll a six, I can't also have rolled a five. Those two events exclude each other mutually. They're mutually exclusive. So introducing this terminology, multi multi mutually exclusive, and uh, introducing an equation seems like it's made things a little more complicated than uh, they needed to be for something we could have just answered without any equations. Uh, but when we move on and study problems that are more about chemistry and less about simple things like cards and dice, then it's useful to have these equations and terminology to fall back on. Uh, just to do one example of something that's, that's more like a chemistry problem rather than a, a dice problem. And it will be equivalently easy as the dice problem. Let's say we have a butane molecule, a molecule of uh, butane, C4H10. N-butane can exist in three different conformations. It can exist in the, the trans or anti conformation or a gauche conformation. And the gauche conformation can either be gauche plus or gauche minus. So those are the three different conformations that a butane molecule can have. If you don't remember what the conformations of butane uh, are, that's not terribly relevant for this problem. but I'll tell you that at room temperature in the gas phase, butane, there's a 68% probability, 68% chance that if you uh, grab a butane molecule out of the gas phase, it'll be in the anti-configuration, a 16% chance that it'll be in the gauche plus configuration, conformation, and a 16% chance that it's in the gauche minus conformation. We can just treat those as experimental numbers. Uh, we'll learn later on in the course how we can calculate numbers like that. But those, those probabilities add up to 100%. And let's say the question we want to know is, overall, what's the probability that a butane molecule selected randomly will be in one of the two gauche configurations, i.e., uh, 
probability that it's in the gauche plus or the gauche minus uh, configuration. So this is that same type of problem. If it's in the gauche plus configuration, it can't also be in the gauche minus, and vice versa. Those probabilities exclude each other. They're mutually exclusive. So uh, the way we can find out the probability that's either this or this is by adding those two things together. Probability of gauche plus and probability of gauche minus combined. So 16% and 16% gives us 32%. So uh, mathematically, just as easy as the example with rolling a die, but uh, one step um, slightly more confusing because it's talking about chemistry instead of talking about uh, simple numbers like uh, rolling dice. The key thing to remember is when you, when you have an or problem, probability of one thing or another thing, if the two options are mutually exclusive, you just add the two individual probabilities together. It's important to remember uh, to check for whether the options are mutually exclusive, and that won't always be the case. So as a third example, one where it's useful to remember this terminology and uh, uh, double check that things are mutually exclusive, We'll do an example with, with cards instead of with dice. Let's say out of a normal deck of playing cards, I draw one card, and I want to know what's the probability that I've drawn a queen or that I've drawn a heart, a card with a suit of hearts out of that deck of cards. So that sounds like an or problem. It sounds like uh, I might want to say Add the probability of drawing a queen to the probability of drawing a heart. The probability of drawing a queen out of the 52 cards in the deck, there's four cards that are queens. And there's 13 cards that are hearts. So there's 13 chances out of 52 that I could draw a card that's a heart. So if I add those together, I would get 17 out of 52. But we know that's not the right answer. Those 13 cards that are hearts include the queen of hearts. There's only three additional queens that are uh, uh, not hearts. So adding these two numbers together doesn't give us the right answer. This is not the right answer. The probability of a queen or a heart is not the probability of a queen plus the probability of a heart. The right answer is only 16 out of 52. There's 16 cards that are either a queen or a heart. And the reason we didn't get the right answer with this equation is, is queens and hearts are not mutually exclusive. If I draw a queen, I could also have drawn a heart. Uh, those two possibilities don't exclude one another. So that example is here just to show us that um, it's the simple rule is whenever you see an or problem, add the two individual probabilities. That works a lot of the time, but it only works if the events you're talking about are mutually exclusive. So. Our next step will be to uh, understand the other basic rules of probability and then to see what happens when we combine them with one another.